will be after. It will be available after um, today. So if you want to go back and look at anything, if there are things in our last session, we did kind of like majorly go off the grid. <laughs> And so if there are things that we have in our slide deck that we don't cover, the slide deck actually is pretty um, informative as far as like walking through steps. So it, you know, you can kind of gather it from the images in the deck. So we'll cover some of those things depending on what you guys want. And then if we need to like supplement with other things, we can do that. But the recording, we're, we are recording, as you heard, so the recording will be available on the last slide. Once we have the link to it, we'll add it to the last slide so that you can always come back and watch the recording if you wanted. Okay. Oh, and I just saw that about the, about the recording. And yes, so once you have the link, you could put it wherever you wanted if you wanted to save it somewhere else. It'll just be a link. Okay, and then you um, Zoom actually is going to automatically record um, attendance for us. So um, unless you're logged in, sometimes I know when we log in, it logs us in as some random name, like in our family that was using the computer earlier in the day. So if it does that, um, we are going to use this sign in sheet. I think is that coming up? I'm confused on the order. We'll put that in the slide four. It'll be, it'll be yeah. coming up in just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put in a sign in sheet in the chat box, just like you probably used in the morning one. And then you can fill that out and say you were here. Okay. And I am Carrie Heidenreich. I go by Carrie, but my Zoom name, it, I can't change it because it was made by my school and my full name is Carol Lee, but I answer to both. So, and then um, the slide deck does have my email address and Ellie's email address. Ellie's here with me today and she's amazing and has tons of knowledge about Canvas and so, um, and lots of other things too <laughs> about teaching online. So um, you've, you're welcome to reach out to us after the training or you know another day if a question comes up, it doesn't just have to end today. So we do work for ASU Prep Digital, which is an online school, an online high school. Well, no, it's not even just a high school. We added K through eight this year. Um, I am in my 10th year of teaching and I did three years of brick and mortar, so like more traditional, and then I transitioned to be an online teacher. And so I do have that experience of like what's different between the two and how to kind of like navigate through that. So um, that's kind of nice. And then there's some kind of like fun facts about me up on the screen. I was a wildcat first. So if there's any wildcats in here or lovers of Tucson. So I was there first and now I work for ASU, which is always kind of fun to talk about in our household because my husband also is a wildcat. And um, that picture up there of me is really recent. It's from this summer. And I actually was lucky enough to go on vacation during COVID-19. We chanced it and it worked out. So we went to Oregon and that is Crater Lake. And Crater Lake is amazing. It's like, um, it's at the top, it's basically like a volcano. It's not active and it has filled up with water. So it's mostly precipitation. So it's like really blue water. So kind of a fun thing that we did this summer. And I have three kids as you can see, and then one on the way. So that's me. And yes, it is great to see all of you guys here. I'm sure you guys have people in here that you know, which is nice to at least see each other from home. So, and then here we have Ellie. Excellent, so I'm Ellie Reich. Um, interesting that Carrie and I were put together for this training because we kind of have, our last name is kind of shared in some regards. <laughs> um, and I'm a training consultant for ASU. Um, I teach in a brick and mortar um, high school um, I teach social studies there, um, and I'm actually in Wisconsin. So I teach in Wisconsin, so I'm two hours ahead of you all. <laughs> and um, we do not start school until next week, so September 1st on Tuesday. <laughs> and 
just to kind of share, because I'm sure that all of your um, experiences starting this year has been like super exciting and interesting. Um, yesterday, as of yesterday, I just became aware that I was made our um, virtual learning coordinator. So um, I'm excited to get started with that. And uh, I have a lot more training that I'm going to be doing uh, for all of my virtual students that I'm now working with too. Um, so I teach social studies um, in, and I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I actually teach in a very small rural district in Denmark, um, which is interesting because sometimes when I go to different trainings, we have our names and then underneath like our district, and people are like, oh, you're from Denmark. You came all the way. I was like, it's not Denmark the country. It's just a small little town in Wisconsin. Um, I do love to travel. I did not do any traveling though during COVID, which is sad, um, but I'm looking forward to hopefully in the future. This is my 14th year in education. Um, and I have two daughters. I have a daughter that's going to be starting third grade. And so she's really excited about that. Also really nervous. And then I have um, my other daughter is going to be starting 4K, which has been a really interesting transition because she hasn't been able to go and see her school or the teachers. So kind of, we'll see how Tuesday goes for drop off. I think it's going to be an absolute nightmare, but they're excited. I'm probably even more excited to get back into the classroom. We'll sh we're starting face to face in my district. So We'll see how it goes, but yeah, good time. All right, well, here is the promised sign-in sheet for um, attendance. So you're welcome to click on that in the chat box and um, we'll give you a minute to do that. Let us know if you can't access it or can't find it or anything. And I think you probably filled one of these in the morning too, but you'll just select a different training for the advanced canvas. Okay, and um, like I said, we do have a small group, um, smaller than maybe some of our trainings. And so, oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> we have a big dog here. So um, with the small group format, it's kind of nice to be able to get on the mic, you know, um, come on with your questions. You can feel free to use the chat box or the mic um, and we can kind of tailor this to hopefully what you're wanting to get out of this afternoon. Um, now, just a little bit of background on where this training is coming from. Um, we are, like I said, with ASU Prep Digital, which has created the Arizona Virtual, Te Arizona Virtual Teacher Institute to help Arizona teachers specifically in this new world of having to do online teaching with what we were already doing. Um, and so we do provide training at no cost to schools or teachers um, through the state. So you can get professional development credit. And on this next slide, we're gonna share a link um, where you can find more trainings if you're interested in more, you know, things about online teaching um, or even specific tools. So this link that Ellie's gonna put in the chat has um, a training calendar for September on it. And there are topics like Flipgrid, um, I can't remember all of them, but it's like specific things that if you're like, I was hoping to learn more about that tool and use that in my classroom. Um, there is also an eight day session that you can sign up for that, again, these are free and you get professional development credit for them. The eight day session isn't like all in a row, it would be like two maybe a week that are after school hours. Um, and we cover different things like um, best practices in online teaching and pedagogy, um, things like academic integrity, which is kind of like a different ballgame sometimes online, or even like synchronous versus asynchronous learning, how to make your live lessons like, you know, be engaging, things like that. So um, they are really great sessions. All of our trainers are 
really awesome. So um, feel free to sign up there if you want some free training and development. Development. I know I will be probably twice a week doing doing work. So if you, if you want to come and hang out, learn more with me, great time. Yeah, it's kind of a nice community too, just to be there with other teachers who are like trying to learn the ropes, you know, um, and there's a lot of great things shared in those sessions among teachers in Arizona, which is cool. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit about the format today and our idea was that it would be because this is advanced kind of a workshop too. So we'll see what that looks like. It looked um, maybe different in our last session than it will look for this one because we had a lot of people with a lot of like different questions than maybe what we had planned, but we'll kind of get a litmus test here at the beginning and then do a little bit of demoing and then hopefully you'll have some time to try things out and see if it's working. If it's not working, you at least have someone here to help answer um, that. <laughs> we'll try to figure it out together and troubleshoot. Um, and we'll just share di different tools, tips and tricks in Canvas that you might not have seen before. Okay, um, so with that being said, you probably wanna have Canvas open. Um, you may want to have some kind of like demo course or sandbox course that you don't care about if you're changing, right? Um, that's like a good practice. You could have a regular course open if you know exactly what you're wanting to try to do in that one, but you could, if you just wanted to try something out, like add a cool Flipgrid assignment, but you don't want your kids having any chance of seeing it, you could create a course, call it whatever you want, like demo, sand, we call it a sandbox a lot of times. It's kind of just a place to mess around in Canvas. So those are some ideas about kind of how to get something out of today. And then um, we'll go ahead and start with this. So this is basically like our agenda slide, but a little bit more interactive because I was thinking, let's just see what looks interesting. And I don't know, you know, if anyone in here has used polls in Zoom, I would have done this in Zoom, like a poll, and that would have been cool. But I'm not the official owner of this Zoom room. And so I, it's not letting me create a poll right now, um, which it, it usually does. But you could create a poll ahead of time if I was like the owner of this room and I could have done this in Zoom. So that, that's just an idea for live lessons. So we'll just do it in the chat because that's what good teachers do is they just kind of go with the flow, right? So we'll just, in the chat, if you wanna look through A through H and let us know which one or ones you're interested in spending time on today. And we can try to gear our time more towards that and less towards the other things. Or if there's something that's not on this list, feel free to put that in the chat too. Okay, we got a couple votes. Seeing a couple grade books, some external tools, a couple for the Google Drive. And it sounds like we have a, a different, like a wide range of interests too, which is which is totally okay. Um, we'll try obviously to get to everything. So, okay. Awesome, I think we covered them all. I think, I think they're pretty much all on there, yeah. Yeah, but this is good. Now, there were a few votes for A. So um, in our last session, that was the Google, it was the Google Drive was A. Um, in our last session, we learned that perhaps not all students have Google Drive accounts right like um that that even may be a concern for some elementary students like that's not really being provided by the school so we'll still demo it um because it's actually the way that you go about using google drive in canvas can apply to other things as well 
So even if you're not using Google Drive, you may like this feature of using what's called an external tool in Canvas. So, you know, you can still experiment even if you don't know if your students would actually utilize this because what, what we're going to demo is how to create um, basically here's my my kind of thought process in the traditional classroom you would have a worksheet right you hand your worksheet out to all your students they all have a copy of it they write on it they turn it back in sounds simple right where you might in your google drive create a google doc that is your worksheet and you want to share that with students but you want everyone to have their own copy type on it and turn it back into you right so this is going to be just one option of how to do that it's not the only option because even if you don't use google drive or your students don't use google drive you could still create the assignment in canvas right but since we're a little bit more advanced we're going to do how to do google drive okay so i am going to share my screen here let me get the right thing pulled up hopefully And here we go. Okay, so feel free to pause me if you're like, wait, where, where did you click? What did you do? Um, but again, we are recording this whole thing. So all the steps will be in there. But this is just like I said, kind of a little sandbox course that I created. I did not write this course. Um, I actually pulled it over from Commons, which will show how to do if you want to like find things that other people have created and pull them over. But um, so if I go into my modules, you'll see I have a ton of cool stuff and it pulled it all over for me. But let's say that I want to make a Google Drive assignment, like I was saying. So I actually made this one. Um, oh, and I just saw in the chat there was um, someone wanted to go over quizzes. We did do a little bit of that in our last session, so we'll try to make some time for that too. Um, I'm going to delete this and start over. Okay, so I'm inside my modules right now. I kind of like to add assignments this way so that it goes right into the module where I want it to be. So I'm just going to add something here. So I clicked the little plus sign and then new assignment. And I have this Google Doc that's called My Smart Goal. It doesn't have to have the exact same name in here. But I'm just going to do it so it's not confusing to the student when they open up the doc. So you'll click add item. Now indenting that just has to do with spacing and things on your modules. So if you want it to be indented, you know, I could do that if I wanted. So I'm going to click on that assignment. So it just created basically a blank assignment. And so if I go into it, there's nothing there, but I want it to be a Google Drive assignment. So I'm going to edit it. And I'm because, you know, this is our one of our first things we're doing in here. I'm just going to show a little bit of how I do things. So maybe I want this to be a 10 point assignment. I would put it in my correct assignment group, especially if I'm weighting my grades. So assignments. Um, what's really important when you're going to do something like a Google Drive assignment is this submission type. So what you want to select as the submission type is external tool. Okay, so there are a lot of external tools. Um, and what you'll do is you'll just click on find. And you'll see all these external tools that could link canvas with something else. You may not know what all of them are, it doesn't really matter, um, but Google Drive Cloud Assignment is the one we want. So if I click on that, now, if it's your first time ever doing this, it's gonna ask you to um, allow access to your Google Drive. So you'll just click to allow access and then it will let you search for things. So you'll have a couple like things to click through, which I unfortunately don't have like a slide on that. But, but yeah, you'll just click through that to, to authenticate it, but well, or, you know, allow access to your Google Drive. And then I know that my, my Google Drive, like, document that I created, I'll even show it to you, 
it's just this. I just made a Google Doc and it just has like a table on it. And my plan is that I want my kids to be able to fill this out, but I don't want them to edit my document, right? Like I, I want lots of kids to be able to have their own SMART goal. So I would click on in here, the one that I wanted, I know it's that one. And then I'll click submit and then it's kind of weird. It doesn't tell me that I clicked the right one, but I just select what I just did. And then it will put that link in there. I kind of like to load tools in a new tab and it will pop it up and it make it like a full screen with my smart goal, Google Doc. But you don't have to do that. You can actually see it right in Canvas. And Travis, did you have a question? I do have a question. So yeah. um, is there a way to do multiple ways of submission? Um, and so like in this way, you're doing an external tool. So you're choosing Google Drive, which is great and it's wonderful. And I would, I would love to do that. But also I've had problems with students accessing certain things. So like I've had students having issues being able to get on Google. So like I want to have alternative ways for them to submit assignments. So like say it will, they can't get into Google Drive. Well, okay, I uploaded the PDF as well. So you can take a screenshot and annotate that screenshot. Like I wanna give them multiple ways so I can have as many students as possible do the assignment. Yeah, so um, I don't know if there's a way to do multiple, like external tool and like submit a file in the same assignment. But when you allow them to do online, that does have multiple options. Like they could send a Google Doc, but it's not going to show your Google Doc and create a copy of it for them, basically. So I, if, I, if I were you and I was worried about the Google Drive, like I said, like not everybody has a Google account, then yeah, I would do like an online submission. And I've had kids that will be able to upload a Word document with that, and then other kids that just share their Google Doc. And they can select, they actually can select when they go to submit it, if they want to link their Google Drive. Does that make sense? Gotcha, yeah. Um, and so it's interesting, I'll be in the speed grader, and like I'll be grading everybody's, and some kids, they've like just like, you can even select that they could just type their answer straight in, like text entry. And then other kids have uploaded a Word document, and then other kids have uploaded like a Google Drive, and you can kind of like see them as you go through. But that would be through the online one. Thank you. Yeah, great question. So again, this is like, what this is gonna do, you'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just finish it out. Save and publish. Now publishing makes it visible to the students, so you know, if you're not ready, you could just do save. So I didn't load it in a new tab. So you see it kind of like embedded a Google Doc in here. Um, and they can go in, they can type in it. Okay, now I'm in my teacher view. This isn't a student view. But what it does is if you've ever used Google Classroom, the idea is that I just had one Google Doc. And it's going to create a copy of that Google Doc for every single student, not inside my drive, it's not going to clutter that up, but it's going to basically create a copy that every single person can edit their own. And when they submit it, it's their own. And it will actually plop that Google Doc into the student's Google Drive, which is why if the student doesn't have a Google Drive, that may not work, right? So. Um, again, I don't want to get hung up on all of that because if you're, you, you're, you may not need this for all of your students, but the important part is that external tool that we're kind of showcasing that you could maybe try out with certain things um, and see if that's going to work for you to kind of like embed something into an assignment. Okay, and Ellie's going to even show more on that of, of kind of like using an app to put into an assignment. Perfect, and that's actually our next topic. So if you are follow following along on our presentation, we're going to be on slide 13. And Carrie, actually, I'm thinking if you just stay into Canvas rather than sh jumping back and forth. 
So we're going to now look at adding apps and how to do that in Canvas. So what you are going to want to do is you're going to pick your course that you would like to link an app or integrate an app to. Um, so Carrie has selected her fifth grade um, course that she wants to connect. And we're going to use um, the example of Flipgrid. That's what we're going to work with. But I'm going to show you where to find all of those apps. So she's in her course. When you get into your course, you'll see that there is a secondary um, like list on the left-hand side. And she's going to scroll all the way down yep, under Home. And she's going to go down to Settings. So this is inside an actual course. So not like your Canvas settings. It's the course settings. And when she goes into courses, she's going to have a whole bunch of tabs that come available. Course details. She has the ability to work with sections, navigation. And then what we want to look at, though, is apps. So she's going to click on apps. And what comes up is you are going to see um, a whole bunch of apps that can be integrated into Canvas. Now, some of these apps you might look at, and I was going through and I was like, I don't even know what that app is. Like, that seems like it's really cool. So now I have a whole bunch of homework to go and look into all of these different apps. Um, but what um, is nice, so there's a lot of them in there. Um, you can search, so she has identified that like they're all of the apps. You can also search by name. So we're going to look for Flipgrid, because that's the one that I wanted to use um, and kind of show you through. Okay, so she has found there is Flipgrid in there. That's really good for us. Um, is there anybody who uses Flipgrid right now in their classes? Excellent, Travis, do you wanna take just a second, maybe jump on the mic? How, like, can you explain to those who don't have it, maybe what you like about it, what it is? Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, as a music teacher <laughs> and band director, Flipgrid is, is really amazing because, um, it allows the students to create just short video clips and you can change the, the amount of time, you know, you want them to do. And it's really easy, almost like uh, if they were creating like a, a Snapchat or something like that, right? They would just like press the button and then take a video recording of themselves and they can add emoji and things like that on it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I definitely for music, definitely wonderful. World languages, I think there's a lot of applications here. Um, with Flipgrid, if you're teaching like speech or if you need to assess student speech, especially in the virtual world, like Flipgrid is going to be really helpful for you. Um, so it's definitely a useful web point um, to 2.0 tool. Um, what's nice is as we integrate it into Canvas, it now allows us to have the students go out and take a video and then we can grade just their video in the seed grader, which is really, really nice. Um, kind of saves a little bit. Um, excellent. Vanessa, we're going to get there right now. So go yes, ahead. You guys are on it. So, I know. I love it. <laughs> so if we click Flipgrid, okay, it's going to, it, it gives us some information on the one side about, um, you know, like how it's going to integrate with Canvas, but we can go ahead and we can click add app. When you click add app, this is going to come up and immediately like, whoa, what's a, what's, what's a <laughs> consumer key? And now I need a special secret code. Like, no, <laughs> share that with me. Like, oh my gosh. So what you're going to do now is you're going to like keep this here, don't close that out. You're gonna go up and you're gonna open up a new tab in your browser. And you're gonna go into your Flipgrid account. So you do um, already have to have a Flipgrid account for this. Um, so Carrie's already logged into her Flipgrid account. And what she's gonna do is she's gonna go onto the right hand side, top where you see that really cool emoji with the sunglasses, you're gonna click on that. And then you're going to go down to integrations. So again, if you're following along right now, you're logging into your Flipgrid account, your free Flipgrid account that you've created. You're going over to the little emoji icon at the top, clicking and going to integrations. And then you're going to want to add new integration. Now, Carrie, we did this one already before, um, but she can, we can just practice it again. So if you want to do like fifth grade demo two, <laughs> you're going to name it whatever, like you're going to want to name it for that class that you are using this with. Does it need to be like a name of a class? Is it going to integrate it with the course or is it going to integrate it with an assignment? So because you're creating this under your course, it's going to be connected to your course. And then you're okay. going to, to have down, um, like when you go to create your assignment, which I'll show in just a minute, then you're going to create your flip grid for that course, for that assignment. Does that make sense? Okay. So you're going to go ahead and create. And then you're going to see that you have the consumer key that you're going to copy. And thank goodness they have that little copy button that you can just press because it's a pretty lengthy uh, key. And then you're going to go back into Canvas. You'll just paste that right in there. 
and then you'll click down to the shared secret, copy the shared secret, and then paste, and then you're going to add app. Sure, um, so we can do that real quick again. So um, just so that everybody can see how to do this. So go back again, integrate. So you're going to go into, so if we start that again, um, Carrie, can you go to Canvas real quick? Go oh, Canvas. I'll just go through it again. So in Canvas to get to the apps, you're gonna go course, oh. settings. So pick your course and then go down to the settings. You'll go to apps and then you will find the app that you want to connect. So in this case, we were looking at Flipgrid. So then you would click on Flipgrid and then you would add app. And then to get your consumer key and secret code again, you're gonna go into your Flipgrid account that you've logged in. You're gonna to go to the cool emoji with the sunglasses, click on that and do integrations. Then um, now Carrie already has it for this class, so we're good there. Um, but you would add your, if you don't have it, you would add the new integration. You only have to do it once per class. Add new integration and then copy the consumer key, paste it into Canvas and then copy your shared secret into Canvas. Does that help Marisol? Hoping that that does. Um, and then, um, and so understand that if you're like, oh, Marisol, did you have a question? Oh, I was going to ask a question. Oh, when yeah. When you log into the account, I don't have Flipgrid, so I was trying to use BrainPop. So once, then I go back to Canvas, once I've opened it up on the external app, and then do what? I don't see an emoji. Oh, sure. So each different, um, so Flipgrid has the emoji, but for instance, um, on Edpuzzle, Carrie, do you have an Edpuzzle account or no? I don't think so. You said you were using BrainPop. I wonder, Vanessa, do you want to try sharing your screen and show us the BrainPop one? That was on my iMac. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Really okay, so, so for instance, with like Edpuzzle, so it's another one that I use, is Edpuzzle. Here I can Edpuzzle. See. I don't know if Sure. Edpuzzle has like, um, you have to go into, you click on your name and then that'll bring up like some settings. And then in Edpuzzle, you click on school and it'll show you then the codes there. Um, so each one has a little bit different of where you get that consumer code. So if you just go to like um, a search um, and just type in how like um, Edpop integration with Canvas, um, like, and it'll show you like how to find that code for Edpop. Does that help? Thank you. Um, Mirasol was also wondering about Nearpod. I haven't tried them all, so. Uh, is Nearpod integrated in there? Is that one of the apps that you can connect? It is, yeah, okay. one of the external apps. So you do need that consumer key still. I'm not sure where it would be on there. It might just. I wonder if you can even just search on like Nearpod for consumer key. Um, okay. Well, here I got I got that one. So oh, I'm you gonna, have that one. Okay. Yeah. Here's the Nearpod. Um, you would just log into your account and then and then you'd be able to click through there because it, it has a generate consumer key and shared secret. Um, and so then you would be able to use that. Okay. Thank you guys for trying it out while we're going. This is good. So use, you know, find the tool. Hopefully it's funny because Ellie said that she likes to use Padlet and Padlet is another great tool. Um, I, I don't know, Ellie, because um, she said it, it, it's not showing up today in Canvas, but like I've seen other people integrate it into their, into yeah, their, so, so. So I know that it's not on the apps, um, but maybe that's something that they're maybe working towards later. Um, but yeah, the, and the integration piece um, is really helpful for like the assignments. So Carrie, if you go back into Canvas, you can show how now that you have Flipgrid integrated how you can set up an assignment um, for your students to then submit via Flipgrid. So you're going to go into assignment or 
you can also, you know, there's multi, what's nice about Canvas is there's lots of different ways of doing the same thing. So you could also go into a, your module and then add an assignment that way. Um, so if you go ahead and click a new assignment, and let's say we want to just do an introduction Flipgrid. Oh. I really like this setup, Carrie, where I get to tell you what to do. That's great. I know. I'm like, what am I doing? Okay. <laughs> Introductions, um, flip, flip grid, or introduce yourself. Let me get sound fun. Perfect. Perfect. That's perfect. So maybe okay. at the beginning of your course, which we're already past, but you could do something like that. If you do, do we all know what Flipgrid is? I know we talked yep. about it a little bit. Um, so basically they'll be able to record that video. And so it's kind of a nice little discussion tool for the kids to see each other talking on video. Now for this, um, the next part where you have that text box, this is going to be important to give your directions to your students on what you want them to actually put in their video. Um, so if you want them to record a scale that they're working on, um, then you'd want to, to put that in there so that they know exactly what they're going to do. Okay. And, you know, because this is just, we're going through it, you know, we're just doing something short, you would want to obviously put in there whatever those directions are so that your students feel comfortable with it. You can assign points to this. Um, you can, um, so it just like an assignment, like you can go ahead and you can put all of that information. So Kara, if you want to scroll down. No, I just made that up. I don't know. Can you do that, Travis, in Flipgrid? Can you comment on each other's videos or no? <laughs> you you can, do, you can do that when you're going to just do it as a full class upgrade, but as you're doing this assignment one, um, it's going to post um, because you're going to be able to go in and speed grade um, just their, their PS. Okay. All right, we'll do it like that. Okay. okay. So, so if we scroll down now, what we're going to do, it's like you'd put in all that, but we're going to go into just similar like Carrie had shown us with the Google um, Drive extension, we're going to go into an external tool. And we're going to click the find button. And now we're going to select Flipgrid. Ooh, it's in there twice because I did it earlier in my other class. Oh, that's what that question was. Okay. Yep. And I did uh, find the directions <laughs> on how to delete those. So I can share that as we get going a little bit more too. Um, okay. Gonna... If we need that. Okay. I love it somewhere I'll else. I'll assume it's <laughs> this second one. <laughs> I don't know if it matters. Okay. And then what if the next option, it says load into a new video, um, new tab, a new window. You scroll. Oh, yeah. Page. Yep. Um, so I would always encourage you, especially when you're using Flipgrid or something that's going to be a little bit larger, um, even if you're going to have that assignment that's a Google Doc, sometimes um, if you don't click that, what's going to happen, it's going to show right onto um, your canvas, but it's going to be a smaller window. So they might have to scroll over this way or scroll down. Um, and it could be a little bit more challenging for some students. You might then have to answer all the emails of, I couldn't find where to hit the submit button. And well, you just have to scroll down and over. If it opens up in a new tab, it's going to not, you're not going to have to worry about those issues. Um, so really helpful to keep that new tab. Um, and then you can go ahead and you can submit done. Like you can pick your date that you'd want that due. Um, so you can pick all of those pieces. And then you can save. And when you save, then you can go ahead and you can now um, go in, you can click on that. We're going to test this out and it opens up into a new tab, which we had asked. And then you can go ahead and you can add, just like if you're using Flipgrid in your classroom, you have the ability to add all those media features. So you can add your topic, um, a topic focus in there. Um, you'd be able to add some of that pieces. Um, you could look at then changing the time that you have because Flipgrid does allow you to have a longer video or a shorter video. Um, so you'd be able to have that on there. Awesome. Okay. So hopefully something fun to add to your toolbox of like things that you can kind of, I, I always use the term loosely, but like embed into Canvas, like put it right in so that they can just have a button to click on to go to another thing. Um, the more we can keep in Canvas, the better, right? Instead of having to like send them separate things outside of Canvas. So, and I'm going to put I'm going to put into okay. to the chat box. This is a um, PDF that Canvas has on on specifically Flipgrid and using it. So if you're somebody who you're like, oh, I kind of want to use that, or oh, I really like Flipgrid, and I definitely want a little bit more on that. 
this is a really helpful PDF to maybe just click on and save. And then you'd be able to um, use that like as your problem shooting in the future if anything comes up. And I'm going to go ahead and add that right into our slide deck so that if you, I, oh no, sure. it's in there. I did. Yep, I put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so here's where we're at. Thank you if you just joined us. So we're just going through some different things that you could be adding into your Canvas assignments or um, I have a question, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for joining late, but I did not get the Zoom link or ID. I registered oh. and I never got anything. So oh. I, I emailed Maria, but I didn't get any response. So I attended, actually joined Ms. Laughlin's session. And from there, it was it was crazy so i missed out a lot can you please refresh me on what happened so i'm going to go ahead and put the link to the presentation um back in the chat box oh there i, I just did it <laughs> okay yeah so and then we are recording so if you want to go back to the beginning we're going to put the link to our recording on the last slide in the presentation once we have that link later to date so anything you missed um, will be in there. Plus it's on the slides, like some of the things that we've clicked through. Okay, and then um, along with that, you may, have, you may have already signed in. Maybe Ellie, can you put the sign in link too? Sure, it's also on, um, I'll put the link, but or you can go on slide four, slide four is. But I'll put it in just a moment. And if you did already sign into an afternoon session, you may not have to say, you know, you may not have to sign in again, but if you want to, just to make sure, you're welcome to use that. Oh, perfect. I know it said, uh, Richard says that this will go into the RSD video library. Awesome. Okay. So, um, we have come to a kind of a good, I think, like pause point to see how we're feeling about it. Um, would it help to have 10 minutes to try try some of this out or do we want to just keep moving forward and learn new things what would you guys like to do i know some people are secretly trying it out while we're talking which is can, good can you answer a specific question sure okay um my question is how do the students submit a pdf assignment Submit a PDF assignment. Okay, sure. We can take a minute to do that. And I'm seeing lots of keep going. We're ready to move. Okay. <laughs> like the faster, the better, right? Okay. So let's do, let's do one of the PDF assignments. Um, okay. I'm just trying to think of how to demo it in a way that might be helpful. Okay. Um, share my screen, first of all. Okay. So, let's see if I have anything in here that might work. Not really. Okay, we'll make a new assignment. Okay, so I'm just inside a class, just whatever class you want. Like I said, um, for everyone else, that you can create like a fake class if you want to try some of this stuff out. You don't have to do it inside of a regular class if you just want to experiment today. Um, I'll add an assignment. And this thing is kind of new. It's always coming up for me. I never know if I want to select yes or no. Okay. Um, okay. So, you know, I don't know. I have no assignments on the brain right now, but maybe this is um, creative writing essay and you want them to be able to submit it as a PDF. Um, actually, what I wanted was to put a PDF as a detachment and the students be able to write on it. And I know they can't unless they open it in books on their iPads. They have to open it in books and save it and submit it. So that's Perfect. the process I'm looking to get. So you want them to write on the PDF. So Alice, yes. I don't know, are you, could you summarize some of, that came up in our last session or if anyone's had any ideas on that. I, I, I have something. Sure, perfect. I, so, 
you can you can do it that way, the way that you're saying, Anju. But I give my students some flexibility, and so I told them, you know, if it's easier, you can take a screenshot of the PDF, and then you can annotate the PDF because mo our kids, most of them, will have an Apple crayon or something, or they could use their finger. So they take a screenshot and then just annotate it in the Photos app, and then they'll upload that photo as a file. That's what that's what came up in our last session. Show me how to do that. I'm so sorry. I don't know if this is. No, that's okay. So yeah, no, this actually came up a couple times in our last session too. So I think it's helpful to everyone. Um, that's a really good question. And I think, Anju, you're a technology learning leader, correct? Yes. All right. So bring that up Tuesday and Wednesday evening, and we'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay. Yeah, because the screenshot's really easy, and how to annotate it, like Travis is, is saying, is pretty easy as well. We'll go ahead and show you how to do that on um, on Tuesday and Wednesday, so you can support your your campus. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, thank. You. Perfect, and that actually helps because I wasn't sure. Like, I I don't have like the iPad and can't like showcase how that would look on the student side. So I think that'll be really helpful to a lot of people. So great question. Okay, all right. Well, keep them coming. So we can keep going. I'll stop sharing. Um, sure. Not sure what's next, Ellie. We're going to go to embedding content. So we're now going to be on slide 18. So do you want to, Carrie, bring up your yeah. video? Yeah, I'll, show, I'll share my screen again. Okay. Perfect. So this is an easy peasy topic. So if you're like, whoa, that stuff was kind of over my head. I don't know if I'm going to use that, <laughs> that we were just doing. This stuff might be um, a little bit easier, just kind of like just a couple steps and kind of cool, something to learn about, about how to literally embed, like in the sense of the term um, of, of a, like a YouTube video. I'm going to show that. Okay, so here we go. So let's say, um, I'm, I just, I'm going to create like a page, basically, that could be in a module um, where maybe I'm going to have them do an assignment, but before they do the assignment, I want them to watch a video or read some instructions and then watch a video. And I want to put my YouTube video straight into Canvas. So one of the benefits of embedding a YouTube video into Canvas instead of just giving them the link is, um, especially our younger students, we don't necessarily want them navigating to YouTube and then being able to like search and do all that crazy stuff on YouTube, right? So like it would be nice if they could just watch the video in Canvas, not have a YouTube link and even know that that's an option. So that's what this will do, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a page and again, with the found auto saved content. Okay. Um, so I have this cool video on how is power divided in our government. And I want, you know, them to watch the video. So I'm just gonna plop that, plop that video in here. Now you can't just copy and paste a video, right? You can copy and paste images, which isn't actually a great idea in Canvas because they don't always show up anyway. But here's my YouTube video. Now, just a kind of cool resource. If you're looking for videos, TED Ed is kind of cool for um, simple explanations of topics for like kids. So there's lots of lots of great videos on here. So here's one on power in the United States government. So every YouTube video has multiple ways of sharing it. So you will you will not take this link because that will actually still give them the link and help let them be able to navigate outside of Canvas and onto YouTube. What you'll do is you'll go to the share button under the YouTube video and you'll see this option to embed it and it will give you the code here. Um, I usually just would put in the whole video, but if for some reason you wanted it to start at a certain point, you could say that, like maybe you wanted to start at 37 seconds. It will add that into the code. So you could do that. I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole video, copy it, and then going back into that assignment that I was trying to create, 
you won't put it like in here. That won't work. Okay, you've got to go ahead and say that you want to upload a video. So these are your little insert buttons here in the rich text editor. And I want to do some media. Okay, so you're going to choose upload or record media. Course media is like videos that you have already uploaded into your Canvas account and basically saved under your files in Canvas. So I don't usually use that, but you could, like if you had your own videos and wanted to upload them all into Canvas, you could choose videos from your course media to embed into this page. I want to upload a video that's not mine, so I'll click upload. Um, you have these different options up here. Um, we're going to use the embed. Remember, I just got the embed code, but I'll just mention that record is kind of cool because you could record your own video right here into Canvas, right? And you could like upload that um, straight into that and then the kids would see you talking on this page. So here's the embed code. And we do have, Veronica has a question real quick. Yes, I was going to ask. So Veronica, what's your question? It's, not, it's sort of related, but not related to this. It's how to um, import students that are already existing from other classes into um, a uh, custom class. Like you make your own class. How do you put those, those kids? Like say, for example, so our district has them in this thing called Synergy and it's got them divided up according to homerooms. But my kids, when they come to me, aren't in homerooms. They're in seventh, eighth splits. And um, so it's all custom. So how oh. do I put kids in there? What's like an easy way? If so anybody... you're wanting a kid at the school to basically be enrolled into your Canvas class? Is that it or no? I'm wanting several kids to be put into a course. And I want to, I guess I'm going to have to create a separate course because right now they have them divided up into, like I said, according to homeroom, which is, not going to work for me. It only this is only for the upper grades. It's not for the lower grades. Just like for six, seven, and eight. Carrie, should we finish this and then we can look at people and yeah. adding? And yeah, Miss yeah. we'll Gallegos, I can show you how to do that later. Oh. I've done I've done that before, so I can show you how to. We work at the same school, so I can show oh. her how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's and, cool. yeah, and we can still show a little bit about the people that will add them one by one. I don't know. Ellie, if it adds, anyway, Travis might be. I want to do the one fell swoop, the easiest method. Nothing, nothing like hunting, pack, and you know. <laughs> okay. Veronica, can I tell you what I did because I did that for fourth grade. Um, I basically made a list of their lunch IDs, and that was easier. I just copied and pasted that list, and that that was uh, they could be added with their lunch IDs and they could be connected to the district uh, records. Okay, I was just looking at that. I was thinking, do I have to click add an ID? Then? <laughs> yeah. But if you can paste, like I said, whatever's the easiest, fastest way, painless. <laughs> yeah, and that might help to have, I wasn't able to catch who was talking. I'm so sorry, but Travis and... I think Travis might have the idea even with the group because you can do it as a group. So if you can't, we can connect and I can show you how to do it as a group. I love how you guys are all working together and supporting yeah, each other. I'm, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to trust that Travis knows how to do that. And if he doesn't, I'm inviting him to reach out to me. <laughs> Travis is going to be like an administrator at some of those training meetings before he so <laughs> me and Brittany so I thought Brittany would jump in there because she's just was um she got the technology uh, help position so shout oh, out yay. I know we all get new positions now right like <laughs> yeah position. I was thinking about doing it but she knows like way way <laughs> Okay, well, so this is cool. I mean, we just finished it. It really, I know it took a little while because we were talking through it, but it really is easy. All you needed was that embed code from YouTube. And then I just went to upload media and went here and pasted that code. That was it. And that plops a YouTube video, basically like copies and pastes the video. And then you'll see if I save that, 
this is what it would look like to the student. They come across it and then they just click play. It plays inside Canvas. Don't have to worry about going to YouTube or anything. Okay. So, yes, and that is another pro, Travis. Yes, I'm like, no ad here at the beginning, right? It just like automatically starts the video, which is great. Okay, so we'll just pause. I know we just had a couple questions, but any questions about anything before we move on? Thank you. And I forgot to share about time. We all care about time. So um, <laughs> at about halfway through, we'll take about a 15 minute break. Okay, kind of do what we need to do, stretch, get out of our seats. And then um, our plan is to end at three o'clock. So, and we'll, we'll make sure that we don't go over. So, okay. Um, all right, what do we have next, Ellie? Do I need to stop sharing or do you wanna? Sure, um, well, we can, the next thing is going to be looking at the customization of borders and buttons. Do you wanna do that now or do you wanna move in. on? Oh, you know, why don't we do a button and then sure. we're not gonna right. do stuff with HTML unless we have time, we'll save that for the end. Those are for our HTML lovers. And Travis had mentioned there is the ability, and Travis is exactly correct, and you can start if you wanted to when you were going to that embed part where it says there the start at, you can click that box and then you can pick where you want that video to start. So if you're picking a video that's a little bit longer and you're like, well, I only need them to like start here. Um, so like the first three minutes really isn't relevant to what we're doing. You can start at minute like three or 30 seconds um, so that you can really maximize the time that the students are spending on the course materials. Perfect. Okay. Buttons. Right. I'm going to show you something kind of fun. So it's all fun, right? But no, I don't like this one. All right. So I'm going to go to my fifth grade demo. And this class has very little in it because I kind of just made it from scratch. But my homepage looks super fun with all these cool little like buttons on them. They're really just images. And I didn't even make this. I went into commons, which is something that Ellie's going to show later. And I just found a homepage template that I liked and I put it onto this. Someone else made it look all fancy and I put it onto this. Um, but like nothing does anything, you know? So like I have these nice images like meet the teacher, but this does ideally this would like link to a video where I'm talking and they get to meet me or daily schedule, you know, could link to something, any of these things. Join live lesson, wouldn't that be nice if that linked to like Zoom, right? So they just click on it and it pulls up Zoom. So the way that you would do this, like, is really, when I say button, it's not really like a button, it's actually just gonna be a link. Um, so, let's say you have some images and you want them to be links on your homepage or on any page. Um, I would go to edit and then it's still just that like rich text editor. And I'm gonna minimize some of this stuff. Now I don't like, Canvas is always so small. So it took me a while to figure out that you can like make these bigger by doing this, by pulling it up and down over on the bottom right corner so you can make it bigger. And I'm gonna scroll down to one, maybe that join live lesson. And I want it to link to my Zoom room so that all that they have to do anytime they're gonna to go to my live lesson or my synchronous session, that they click that and it will take them there. So I'll click on that image. Maybe you don't even have an image yet. You just want there to be a button. Um, what you would do is first you have to put the image in there so I could have, you know, it could be anywhere on the page. You'll upload an image, or maybe you have some images saved in Canvas. That would be under course images. And then you would put that image in there. So you've got to have the picture there first. And then if you want it to be a button that does something, all you really have to do is um, click on it and then click the link button. And then I would, 
it depends on what you want it to do. If I want it to take them to Zoom, that would be an external link, right? It's like another website that they, that's gonna open. So an external link. And then in here, I would paste my Zoom link, which I don't have handy, so, but I would put that in there and click done. And then if you'll notice when it's not a button, you know, like it doesn't do anything. Oh, I need to save. But it won't do anything. But if it if I have linked it to like my Zoom room, it will be a little hand and it will let me click on it. Um, another example, I'll show the one. Let me show this one. Let's say I want the button to take me to something inside the course, like a module or a specific page. Like maybe I have a button that I want to open up recordings that I've made in my class or help videos. So I could click on that image and you would do the exact same process. You would go, oops, link. Um, I'm gonna remove the one I had in there and put in a new one. Um, but I want to do a course link. I, maybe you want it to take like take them, like I said, to a module. So course links, and then you can select exactly where you want it to go. Maybe I want it to take them to this module, or maybe I have a page like extra help videos, and I say I want it to go to that. That was course links. And now if you see when the student goes to this little button and they click on it, it took them to another page in my class, a specific page that has videos on it, supposedly. Okay, yeah, and we can, let me see if we can find it. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was called, but I do like that homepage. I think some people, I, I actually saw someone else using it and I looked for it specifically. So, okay, so that button thing is kind of cool, I think. I think that kids would like to just be able to click on your Zoom button, you know? <laughs> like you could even just find the image that says Zoom, you know, like Google that image, save it to your computer, and then put that image onto your homepage, okay? Um, Yes, and I think it's good, like, it is good for lower elementary, especially because we all, but we all like images, you know, like, I'm like, where's the zoom button? So I was gonna say for my high schoolers, they uh, <laughs> need it just as much. <laughs> yeah. So and Ellie will go through some stuff with commons. And maybe when we're in there, we can look for that home page and see if um, we can find it. So you can search for it too. If you're like, I just for want sure. to yeah. create one. Um, a comment, I guess, about images in Canvas, I've kind of alluded to it a couple of times. Like, you do not want to go, let's say to Google Images, you find the Zoom picture, and then, and then you do not want to do this. Do not click like copy and then just paste it into the rich text editor because most likely um, the kids won't actually be able to see it. It doesn't do it right. So you actually need to download the image to your computer and upload the image into Canvas. Don't just use like copy and paste on images. Okay. Um, otherwise it'll come up as like a little thing that looks weird and the kids will be like, what's that? It doesn't look like it's gonna work, you know? So, okay. I like the button thing, so. Perfect. Well, I think we can transition right into looking um, at how to find that home page or other course materials that you want to bring into your class. So we're going to talk about Canvas Commons. So um, you're going to go on to the left hand side um, and yours is the ASU Preparatory Academy, but we're going to go down under Inbox and it will say Commons. So go ahead and click that. And then this is going to bring up a large um, searching area for us. So right now, Carrie has hers set. Uh, does it automatically reset for just your filter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would try to, yeah, you may have some stuff in, I don't know, um, you could check for your school specifically and see if there's a commons like to filter it. 
I just went to this filter button, but I find that the more filters, I mean, that sounds obvious, but the more filters I have, the less that shows up and something, some, often nothing shows up. So I don't have any filters on right now because I'm just gonna search. So and let's, let's do a search for that homepage. Home. see if it comes up with you might need you're probably going to find a lot of different things so again this is just like searching google you kind of have to put into a couple different things see if something comes up that you like and then you, yep just like carrie's doing so if something she's looking at it looks kind of interesting she's going to click on that that button and it's going to bring up the we do use this one at our school you're welcome to um it still has these kinds of buttons that are actually just images, but um, where did I find it? <laughs> we'll click on that one and see. Oh, here it oh, is. That's one. It says secondary, go. but I think it looks good for, you know, I guess, you know, it only has a few, but that's okay. So, so this I is your oh, go ahead. I'm just, if you're looking for it and you want to do this, it's in commons, like Ellie said, and then you would search home page template ASU. Um, but you, you know, there's a lot out there. So you could be like, I want elementary. You know, and you can do a little bit of digging and find one that that you like. Um, and then you're, you, Ellie's gonna show, but you can edit it. It doesn't have to be like, you just use theirs and it has to look like that. Correct. So if we want, should we just try? Let's do that um, elementary homepage template. That's, oh, sorry. sorry. Or just anyone. I think I'm just gonna anyone. do that. Anyone, doesn't matter. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So we're gonna click on that. So you click on the link and then you'll be able to scroll down. It gives you a view of it. If it's something that you're like, yeah, this looks really great. I like it. Then what you would do is where you can see on the right hand side, it says import download. You're gonna go ahead and click on that. And I'm gonna show you an example too of um, downloading more content in like a module, but this is the page where we look for something very specific for this. Um, so you're going to want to import into your class. So you're picking the class that you want this to be part of. You can also make it go to all of your classes. So if you feel like um, this is something that would be really important for all of your classes, you can do that. Or if you just have one class and then you would do import into course. Now keep in mind when you import this into course, all of your courses are you're, you're currently in school. So this is something that as you put stuff in there, recognize if your students are in school and you're putting an assignment in there, it's gonna show like, hey, there's this assignment. So that's where Carrie had mentioned like kind of working in that sandbox, um, going through um, picking and choosing some things could be helpful as you're doing that. So then um, it's downloaded. So it says you have successfully started the import. So she will now want to go to her, her course and she had picked the fifth grade demo and when you get into there, um, you will see this is my old one. So we yeah. have downloaded a different one. So I'm, she's going to show how to find the real one we just did. Sure. So this is now under that was a page. Um, and so sometimes if you're downloading a lot of material, it'll come up on the top and it will say like uh, still in progress. And then you can check to see when you're in progress, um, like when those are going to. So we just downloaded that one. So it should be in here. Here we go. Home, uh, home page template. So we can click that one, open, and then you would be able to go in and edit it. So go ahead and click that. And then here, um, so this is the page, and are you in the edit function right now? I am not, let me. Okay. Oh, there we go. So when you click on edit, then you would be able to change the name instead of the template, you could change it to your home page. Um, then you could put your school logo, you could, you can edit everything that you want in there. You can um, hyperlink those buttons as we, as Carrie had just shown us. Um, so that's how you would edit and it make it more personalized for your course. And I just put in how we navigated there um, in your search. Um, Make sure you have no filters on if you're looking for this specific one at least. Perfect. So that's, um, so that's an example of the homepage, but I want to go in and show you how to do modules too real quick. So Carrie, if you could go back to common. So again, we're going to search for some other content to add to our course now. Okay. 
and we're going to make sure that we have our filters um, so that we have nothing selected there. There we go. And one of the things that I would encourage, like if you're, you have new students joining or you have students that maybe, you know, next week they're like, oh gosh, I forgot how to submit an assignment. I don't know how. So having like a helpful resource page or module in your course could be really nice. So if we search like intro to Canvas or how to use Canvas, one of those. And then we can take a look. So um, you can kind of look through, you can see what I like about this, you can kind of see it's already sorted into grades. Um, you have how many downloads, so how many times people have like used this, which could kind of give you maybe an idea if it's good or not. But obviously these are like out there, you're gonna have to still look at them and see if it's gonna be good for your class. So let's go to that introduction to Canvas, that David Williams one. It has a thousand downloads, so lots of people have been using it. And now you can go ahead and you can click into all of this. So this is a full module that you would be able to download and put into your course. Um, now, as you, like you can download the whole module and then you can go on and you can be like, oh, I don't really like that. Or if you're looking at this and you're like, wow, I really like that video. I want the video, or I just want that, that, that one page that they have on there. So you can click over on to the left-hand side and you can see that it's broken up into the full module or the pages. Um, and so you kind of can pick and choose in that regard too. Um, so this whole module, let's just do the whole module so we can see how that would transfer over. Okay, and I like it. So let's go ahead and we're going to import download. And again, you could pick the class that you want. And then you can go ahead and import into course. I agree, Richard. I think like this part can be really helpful, especially as you're trying to build some of your content, um, finding things that are out there. You can be very like in your in your search, you can be very specific with already like modules or um, topics that you want to find stuff that's already been created out there. So now that we've successfully started that import, so Carrie, can you go into your course because this one's a little bit larger. Um, so we're going to be able to see that it's probably not there immediately. Um, so, I was just oh, really going to jump in. Um, Ellie, Ellie mentioned this, but I just want to emphasize it again because I don't want anyone to do anything that they're really upset about. So um, when you go to import, um, it's really important, <laughs> sorry, no pun intended there, that you, <laughs> that you make sure that you, you don't want to replace your course. So like I, best practice would be to have that sandbox course already created that is something you don't really care about. Um, not the stuff that you have, all of your stuff that your students have seen, um, and that are, they're using because what can happen sometimes if something is similarly named, it will like replace it. So um, I had a teacher told us in one of our trainings a couple weeks ago that she basically like she downloaded a whole course, like imported a whole entire course into her course. And for example, it replaced her syllabus and she completely lost her syllabus. And she was, you know, like, I don't know if she had another copy, but you don't, you don't wanna like mess up your whole course, right? Especially if you're downloading a bunch of stuff. I would definitely recommend, um, especially if it's a large amount of material that you're trying to import and you really like, put it into a sandbox. And then there is a way to pull things from one of your courses to the one that you want to put it in. That would be the safer way to do it rather than destroying your whole course by an accidental import. Sure. Carrie, okay. let's, um, can we also, after we're done importing this module, can we show how to change that module and put it into another course right away? I think it'll make sense. Sure, okay. yeah. Okay. okay, so we're gonna, hopefully it's, I bet it's now importing, okay. And I put it into here. Yep. yep. So it was a module. So I'm going to go see here where it put it. This was my class that had a ton of stuff, which is not what I said to do, but they they typically put it right at the end, I believe. And you can yeah. you can there we, click, go. there we go. You can click and you can move that around and you can rename it. So if we want to change the name to that instead of introduction, we want to maybe name that uh, campus resources. You can definitely do that. I've, Carrie's doing a lot. I'm having doing a lot right now. I'm like, <laughs> Sorry. There so we you go. Can just so, click yeah. and drag to where you would like it, and then you could put Canvas resources, 
So if you want to put that at the top of your course, if you want to put it at the bottom of your course, your total choice, how you want to organize that, but recognize that that isn't something that you have the ability to do. I do like that where you can move it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom right away. It's, very, it's nice rather than trying to drag it and losing it around the way. Yes. Okay. And so then um, she can also, let's say like we don't want that Canvas student guides in there. Let's say that that we looked at that and it was just like, oh, that's way too confusing for our kids. So you can go ahead and you can click on the, that um, and you can, you can click on it that way um, and just delete it out if you want. Like you don't want to use that. It was something that wasn't relevant as you downloaded it. You can definitely delete it there. You can also delete just right straight here, right? which is I think what Ellie was going to say before I clicked <laughs> out. Okay. Okay. Um, removing it does not delete it actually. It will, it will keep it, if that's like a page, it will keep it in your pages, but it won't be accessible within the modules. So I'll just mention this here. If you've ever wondered what these little grayed out symbol means, these are things that students can't see. And um, another kind of best practice that I would recommend is the less that your students can see over here in this navigation, the better. Because if you have, like, what you really want is everything to be in your modules that you want students to see and do. If you have the assignments visible, students, they like to just get stuff done and they'll just go into assignments and they'll just try to submit assignments and they're maybe doing them out of order. They're not viewing the pages and the videos that you've created and want them to view. So you don't really want all that stuff like clickable to students to just be able to get out of your, like basically your lessons. So modules should have everything housed in it that you want. So when I say like, okay, if I go and I remove this from my modules, it will still be in the pages, but my students can't see it if, you know, and so you kind of, if you want to delete it, then you just delete it from both places, which is totally fine. I usually do that because I just don't want them to see it ever. <laughs> so okay. that's a help, very helpful him. Perfect. Okay. So, um, that's how to copy over from Canvas. Now, as Carrie had mentioned, we kind of would suggest that you probably put it into a sandbox so that it doesn't mess up everything that's in your current class. So when you're ready to then copy it over. So if there's no, any questions before we move on to this, any questions about Canvas Commons that we can help with? No, it doesn't look. I'm just going to give a second if anybody has a question. Okay, so let's talk about how can we import that Im information or Sorry, transfer it to another. Oh, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, is there any way to, when you were talking about the home page, uh, is there any way to preview it before you Im input it? Like, I was trying to look at uh, some home pages that I want to use, but uh, is there any way to preview it before you actually import it? Perfect, yeah. So, Carrie, can you go back to the comments? And it may depend on what it is that you're trying to view. Like if it's con, like, like if there's a course and you're like, oh, I really would like a course that <laughs> had all the stuff that I need in it. Like some of the content may be like paid content. So it may not be letting you view certain things inside commons. But as far as like that home page, it should like, if it's just a page or something or even a module, it should let you preview it. So what do you want me to do, Ellie? Should we look up homepage again? Okay. And then, oh, I think your filters are filtered again. Oh, it's every time. <laughs> and your template, so like that first one, if we just click on that homepage template, that blue link, that should give you, when you scroll down, that should give you a template, like that should give you a view of what you're downloading. Yeah. And this one looks very different, right? Like, so this is it for this one. This is what they've put. Yeah. Does that help, Anju? Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. OK, so let's now talk about how, so we had that information that we had pulled from Commons, and we put it into the sandbox. And now we want to move it from the sandbox, and we want to put it into the fifth grade de demo class. What we are going to do is we are going to go to, um, just pull up the right side here. So we're going to go to our settings. 
and it'd be under chat. Should be, should be settings. I. Where is the settings? Um. It might be. It might not. I think we have to go up a level, so I don't think it's under our core settings. Um, these settings. But I'm just looking. I haven't done this before. I, I do it the long way. I share it to Commons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so that's that's one option you can share it yes. to comments and then somebody okay. can share it that way. This is where um, you make the shared content, I think. I There's saw somewhere where it said import course content. Yeah, where where did you find so that I'm, was I'm, actually I'm, in settings. In settings? Oh perfect. In the course settings? Yes. There should be hold it. Oh, over on the other side. I'm on the wrong side. We need to go on the right, not the left. Ah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you can go down to import course course content and click on We're that. We're all helping each other. So yeah. <laughs> and then content type, we're going to go ahead and we can pull do the drop down. Um, and we can then copy a Canvas. You can copy a whole Canvas course. You can copy, like there's a couple different options there. Um, so let's just copy. We can we can do the course. Let's just do the course. We'll say we're just like let's pretend we're just copying a full course over. Well, in the when you say oh. copy a Canvas course, you can do just a page as well under the copy a Canvas course. Perfect. Yep. So now we can. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. You're exactly correct, Joe. So we can select the course, and then under contact content. Yep. Perfect. There we go. And then where it says. All content, so you can copy the whole course over, or you can do specific content. Okay, um, and then you to click that, and then here's where you can select. Yep. So maybe we'll do. It doesn't seem to be showing. You have to you have to click on the select content. Oh. Yep, up on yeah, and then something will pop up. Yeah, there you there go. go. And so then we would want to go to our modules. Okay, and we're just going to pick that module that we had just transferred over the Canvas resources. And then you scroll down and select that content. And so you could select as much as you want or as little. Um, and then now it's running. So in just a little bit, it's completed. So now if we go to our fifth grade class up on our wow. dashboard. Are you in? Um, I was already in it. Oh, perfect. So now it's right there. And actually, I had it downloaded earlier, but this oh. <laughs> did the one called Canvas Resources. So this pulled it from, I was inside the class I wanted to put it in. And then we pulled it from another class into this one and it plopped it right here into modules at the bottom. So you can pull as much or as little as you would like. So that's how you like from your sandbox that you're playing in, right? The sandbox area, you could then put it into your other classes when you are ready. You would just follow those steps. Any questions question. on that? Yeah, I have a quick question. If you do that and you pull a course into another course, um, if the students had already started on it, like you're doing your own, if the students had already started some of those assignments and uploaded, will those come along with it or not? No, so when it's, it's really just copying like assignments and modules and things like that, it's not copying anything that someone has submitted. So this would be like, um, like if you had, I don't know, there's a lot of different scenarios, but like, let's say you just had multiple Canvas courses where you're like, you know, I'm teaching, right. uh, I don't know, Algebra 1, and I have two different Algebra 1 Canvas courses, and I don't want to have to create the course two times, right. but you would have your students in the one section and the, the other one. Does that make sense? Totally. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Or really helpful at the end of the school year if you wanted to make the copy for like a new course or something for your next school year. Yeah, yeah I just want to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that one as well in our, um, in my combo class because I do have like seven, eight. So I don't have to like 
for the combo class, the seventh part of it. I just have to like do this one. So, you know, you just copy the course itself and the eighth grade and with the, of the eighth grade of the combo class. Yeah. Exactly. Just easy. It'll, easier. it'll yeah. save you a lot of time. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like at our school, um, something we use commons for is like we have an academic integrity module and every kid has to go through it in every single course and say like sign a little thing that says they've gone through it it's the same in every single course but the way it's the same as we use commons and so every teacher has to go in and import that into their course at the beginning is that available to everyone right now in commons i don't know we can look um I'll are check you real quick for it I'll check. Okay. okay um it's called i never know what it's called <laughs> I think it would also be helpful for something like classroom norms and things like that. If you yeah, can, and even if someone at your school created something like that and then they shared it out with the whole school so that it was something that was like cohesive for all students. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking at academic integrity and there's not a, the specific ASU one, but I did look because I was very interested in this for my classes. Uh, there's a lot of different um, modules or pages about academic integrity that in Commons that you would be able to use, but I didn't see the ASU specific um, Prep Digital one in there. Thank you. And I know school has already started, but um, something common, like, you know, that makes it a little bit easier to navigate for students is some many schools will have like some kind of homepage template that everybody uses and then it's the same in every single class so i'm not saying that i'm not trying to like push that on because it's you know half you know not halfway through the school year I might feel like halfway through the school year but you know i you know anything that you want to share even as a department you can get together like with just the people you teach with and say like hey do we want to have any you know it, it helps also split up some of that workload so yay <laughs> Okay. I have a I have a quick question about the yeah. the commons. Is there a way that you can restrict the people that see it? So, for example, in Google Drive, you can like share a link with certain people, or you can share it with certain people. So, like, what if I create content, but I don't want it to be accessible to everybody? So, like, maybe just everybody on my in my specific campus or something like that. Perfect. So that, that is a really great question. And there is the ability for you to um, send to. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily be, and, and Carrie, maybe you know a little bit more, this would be more of a feature of sending specific pages or um, components of a module that you have that you can actually go in and you can send to. So let's, Carrie, let's look at, um, can you go into an assignment that you have in one of the classes and I can show you how to do this. Travis, this might be where it could be helpful um, for you. So okay. look at this. Why don't, yeah, why don't we do this? Oh, Cause do a break. I think in our presentation, this is at the end, right? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Slides. But I think we, I really think it goes better with this stuff now cause it's really showing how to share stuff like that you want to share with other people now. So why don't we do this and then we'll take our break. Perfect. Have a shorter second half okay sound good perfect yep so let's do um courses and let's just go into any assignment that you have okay um let's see we'll pick one and we're going to share it with somebody okay so i have this really great I'm or any any I piece of there course. okay this one right here federalist papers assignment and it even has a rubric in it, which we could talk about today if we have time, but. Okay. And so we're gonna go to those, the three little dots behind to edit, and you, you don't have to go and actually click into it. You can do the same thing from the page and it, where it says send to, you'd be able to click that. And then you could pick who you want to send to. Now, depending on like how this is all set up. So Carrie, I don't know if this one is gonna come up for, for you to send to, um, but like it should come up, yep, because I'm not in the same domain well, as, as the rest okay. of you, yep, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. So then you could send it to Allison um, and then she would be able to get it. So if you send it to her, it would go to her and then there would be, when she goes into her Canvas, there'd be on her account. So if you just press send, is it okay if we send that to her? Or sure. that's she will, I don't think she'll be confused. Okay. 
<laughs> so then under account on the left hand side, so over here on the left hand side, um, there would be like a little one, um, like with a little like notification. And then in there would be um, shared content. If we go down, oh, yep, shared content right there. <laughs> Perfect. And then it would be new information that has been shared with that person. Um, so that would probably hopefully help answer that question, Travis. Yeah, thank you. And then from that point, you would then be able to like maybe import it into a course and yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And there is, like I said, there are some slides on that in our in our uh, Google Slides from today. And Miss Martinez asked, um, "Is you know, is everything I make going to be shared to Commons or no?" And no. So like, it's your choice if you want to share stuff with other teachers or if you want to share it to the public. You know, and so if you just have one person you want to send it to or a whole department, you can choose that. And the way we did that, we were actually in the thing, like the assignment that we wanted to send. Um, I think. Yep, you can do right there, import to comments, and then the whole thing would go, go there. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you would share a whole course other than maybe doing it through Commons. So yeah, I, I think com that's that's what I've seen most people do mm -hmm. is import to Commons, and then other teachers can go and pull it off of there. But I think that even if you're in, if you're sharing something to Commons, you may be able to select some settings if you don't really want it to be like public. You can select who can. I, I'm not super. I don't know how to do that, but but for instance, like um, Carrie, the the class that you had was from Commons, but like I can't search that class because I don't have access. So it must be like the ASU, all of the ASU prep digital, like all their courses aren't just out there. Right. Um, like you, but you had access to get those because you were in that network. Right. So like there are some those things that may be showing up in my commons may not be available to everyone because ASU has created some content that they shared with all of their teachers. And so it's in my account, but there are still a lot of things on commons that a lot of people have shared. I mean, obviously, like, you know, we we imported um, that canvas tutorial, basically that module that had like five things in it. You would want to watch those videos and make sure that they're okay, you know, and that you're putting them into your course and go through the module yourself. You can import it and then do that. You don't have to preview it inside Canvas, I mean inside Commons, because um, I don't know if it, everything is available in there, but you can import it and then if you don't like it, then just delete it. In one of my Canvas trainings with a Canvas representative, um, it was shared that those um, items in the Commons are not vetted like right um, right yeah. yeah anyone can go in there and add stuff and so you just make sure before you share it with students that you're sharing and use caution and like <laughs> you <read these products. laughs> for sure just like searching google you gotta use caution always that's right okay Harry, i think i think it's probably time for a break I think so. So you guys have been so awesome. So hopefully things have been helping um, keep the questions coming and we will, um, you know, get through everything that we can today. I think let's take a break. Um, why don't we come back at about 1.50? Perfect. Okay. I'll, I'll put up minute. a, I can put up a screen if you want. Carrie. Oh, okay. 1.50. Okay. Good to me. I will do that right now. So see you guys in just a little bit. Thank you.
Hey, welcome back. Hopefully well, you were able to stretch your legs a little bit. Get a snack. <laughs> we'll get started here in just a moment. And I think I didn't stop the recording, so that'll be a little bit of a longer break in the recording part. <laughs> that is okay. Okay. Oh. Carrie, I'm going to go ahead and share the um, presentation again in the chat. And I have brought up um, starting on calendar. So going through some of the calendar features, if that's okay with you, Carrie. Yeah, yeah. So we'll shift gears a little bit. We did a lot of talking about commons and sharing things from course to course or pulling things in that you like. So we're going to shift gears here a, li a little bit and talk about some other nice things to know as a teacher in Canvas, like the calendar, and then we'll do a little bit in the grade book and kind of hopefully share some tips and ideas about how to make your life easier in there. So we'll start with the calendar. Um, I, I really like the calendar if you're not really using it. Um, I think kids like it too um, because you know, it's nice to just be able to go and look at a calendar, see what's due, right? So kids can use the calendar for that. So I'll go ahead and share my screen a little bit. Um, so the thing about the calendar is that the calendar, you locate it over here on this left side tab. So you'll notice that it's not inside a course. So um, when you pull up the calendar, it will show anyone who, whichever Canvas account you're in, like if you're the teacher, it will show you all of your courses um, inside the same calendar. So kind of like Google Calendar, if you use Google Calendar at all. Um, so over here under calendars on the right side, I can select, you know, which classes I want to view. I don't have a lot in here. Um, because my courses I kind of just started creating recently, but, um, oh, there we go. This is one of my colleagues courses for pre-calculus, whoops. So you'll, you'll see she has a bunch of assignments due in pre-calculus for her students. So, um, you know, you wanna pick whichever course you wanna be viewing. Now, the good thing to know is that for students, it's the same way. So if they have multiple classes, um, or, or yeah, multiple courses, then they would be able to see all of their courses on the same calendar so they could say like, okay, what's due today or what's due tomorrow? And it would all show up there unless they select just to view like your course. Okay, so that's a little bit about the calendar view. Um, you can create an assignment from the calendar. So if you're like, okay, I know that tomorrow, um, or not tomorrow, because I guess today's Saturday, so we'll go into crazy that we're in September, basically. Okay, um, you know, here we go. We have a couple things here, but I'm like, maybe I want something to be due, you know, at the end of the week. You can click to, uh, you can actually click on that day if you want to have it, again, have, have it selected to be the class you want it to be in. Um, or you can click the little plus button. And then you can either create an event, something like live lesson, you know, or if you have a specific Q&A one day and you want that to show up on the kids calendar, that would be like an event. You could even put the Zoom link into the location, right? Um, if you wanted to create an actual assignment, um, let's say it's the short, you know, short story writing. We want to create um, that for kids to have to do. 
you'll set the due date, which, you know, if I've picked it on the calendar, I want it to be Friday. And then make sure it's in the right, right class. Um, you can even select which assignment, how do I say this, which grading category basically that you want it to be in. Um, I would sync it if your school does sync. I heard you guys are using like Clever or if you use like Infinite Campus or something, you could, you could sync it to that if you wanted. Um, I wouldn't publish it yet because I actually haven't even created this assignment, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. So or I'm going to just submit this. So you'll see it appeared here. But like I said, I actually haven't created this assignment. So if I click on it, and I go to edit it, whoops, no, nope, that didn't do it. This was a little bit new for me. Click on it here, it will take you straight into that course, into that assignment, and now you can say, this is what I want you to do. So you basically can create that assignment from the calendar, put the due date in that you want it, and then go in and create your assignment inside the course. Does that make sense? So, oops, I'm gonna pull up my chat here. Yeah, and I do really like the calendar. Like I said, like I just think many students like that feature of like what's due today, especially as they're getting older. You know, they wanna know like what's due next? What do I need to work on? So um, it can be a nice feature for your students. Um, I'm trying to think. Now you can do this inside your course too. So usually the way that I do it is a little bit backwards of what I just showed. So let's say I'm in my course and I create this assignment, short story writing, and I put all my stuff in. You'll notice down at the bottom, there's a due date. And you may already be doing this, right? Like you may be giving your kids due dates. So let's say, no, I actually wanted it due on the third. It, it didn't have to be created in my calendar to show up in my calendar this will automatically move it or put it straight into your calendar where you wanted it due. So let's go, I may have to, I have too many things again open. <laughs> to September, there we go. So it moved it. So you can be inside an assignment, create a due date, or you can add stuff from the calendar if you like to do it that way. Okay. Those are most of my tips on the calendar. I don't know, does anyone have any interest in seeing anything else? Like we're wondering, can we do this? We okay? Okay. How about the grade book? Should we do a little bit in the grade book? Now I don't have a super, um, I need to get some fake students in here. <laughs> so, but we'll go into my grade book and I'll show you a couple of tips that I've helped, that I've just kind of used over the course of teaching online in Canvas. So here is my grade book. I only have one little student and then a test student. Um, and this actually, I'm going to show this first, maybe. When you first get Canvas and it opens up, there we go. Especially if you have like a lot of assignments like this course does, once you get it going and you open up your grade book, you have to, you see your student names here and you scroll, you have to scroll all the way over to see what their grade even is and it's a big pain. So if you didn't know this, I hope this like saves you a lot of time and annoyance, but you doubt over here way on the right was the total. You can choose with these little three buttons to move it to the front so that those grades, their overall grade is right next to their name, right? So that's a way easier way to be checking grades than to have to scroll way over every time you open up the grade book. So that would be my tip number one. Um, another really cool feature, these, these little drop down menus are really useful. So I don't use 
that individual view a ton. Um, you can obviously arrange by, you know, I usually arrange by student name. Where is that? <laughs> um, I don't know why. Oh, oh, it's, it's, I see. Okay. This is, this arrange by is going to arrange all of my assignments in the grade book. So you can choose how you want to arrange those. If you want to change how the students are arranged, you would click these little three buttons and sort by name. Okay. Um, does the gradebook in Canvas sync to Synergy? Is Synergy something that your whole school is using that's um, kind of like what the kit, is that, is that inside Clever? So I think um, I can answer that. What? It can eventually sync into Synergy, but we're not going to use that right now because what we're focused on is we're focused on learning how to build modules and use the um, modules to support virtual learning right now. And Synergy and, and grading will be something that we learn later. There is the ability to up upload, but what we need to figure out on the um, back end, because we do standards-based grading, if there's an opportunity for us to like sync because of standards-based, if, if Canvas, um, has a way to, to include standards-based grading, so that way it does sync over to Synergy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Richard. So we are trying to figure that out. Yeah, and that will, you know, that kind of comes up a couple times inside the grade book, so that is good to know. Um, okay, so yeah, a few different like things to play around with, with if you want to sort things. Um, what I did want to show is let's say um, you have, for example, a test that all of your kids were supposed to take and some of them didn't and then their grades dropped. You know, <laughs> you wanna have a way to maybe like message all of those students. You can do that really easily from the grade book without having to go and pick student by student and send them a message. So for ex in, on any assignment, you can click these little three dots and then you would click message students who. There's a few different options on that. So you could say haven't submitted yet. You could message all the kids that haven't submitted that assignment. Um, I would probably, the only other one I would probably, maybe one of these two bottom ones, like if they scored less than a certain amount, like and it was a test, you could say, hey, you know, I saw that your score on this test was a little bit lower than we would have liked so do you want to meet one-on-one -on -one and go over it together um and that's really nice or you could you know select scored more than and give them a little congratulations message on doing such a great job and that's a little way to personalize your messages without having to go through and select every single one and when um, you send and when you send that the student isn't going to see everybody else who got that message. So it's not like you're calling out like, oh, here are the kids that did the worst or something like that. Um, it's just going to come right. to them individually. And where does that message show up for them, Karen? So that'll come up in their inbox. So once you send it, it'll come up in their inbox over here. And we did have the question come up last session, if parents receive a message, right? That would be nice. Um, there isn't a way inside that way of messaging to message parents directly. If parents do have like a Canvas Observer account and they've been added to your course, um, you could message them inside the inbox and message just them directly if you wanted to. Um, it sounded like not all parents have been added as observers and that they're working on getting parent accounts right now. So you may just want to use something like email if you have to reach out to a parent about like a specific assignment. Perfect. Yes. So, um, and that, you know, things are in the works. So yeah, and, and good point on Richard that parents need that training, like they're going to need videos, things about how to navigate Canvas or a parent night or something, right? So um, yeah, no worries there. But so I mean, if I were a parent, 
I mean, I, I know we don't really want parents logging in as their student, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, like if I were a parent, I know that I would go to my kid and be like, hey, can you pull up your inbox? Let's see if you have any messages or can you pull up your grade book? Let's look at your grades. And so, um, you know, parents can still do it with, do that with their child. It just, we just want to be careful about them having a little too much access sometimes, but I think most parents have too much to do and maybe not submitting assignments for their children. But <laughs> anyway, okay, um, I digress. So what, I think that's mostly, that's what I was gonna share on grades. Um, I'll show one more thing actually. So let's say, um, so in answer to that question about syncing the grades, inside clever or or what or synergy um does it sync eventually so that you could send out a grade progress report to parents so i know there's a way to upload grades on a regular basis we're trying to figure out whether we do it at night or not like each night there's like an automatic go in and like pull information from canvas and pull it over to synergy which is our student information system. The only part that we're concerned about right now is that we're standards-based grading. And so we wanna make sure that they speak to each other. They, can't, they um, coordinate, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So just trying to figure out some of those questions. Okay, um, there is a way in Canvas, again, well, okay, let's say a parent's like, you know, they reach out to you or you're talking with them because their child is behind and they say, can you send me a list of all of their missing assignments, which could be long, <laughs> right? And instead of going in and typing it out, what I usually do is I will pull up the student. I do do this one by one, so I don't like do it every week and I don't do it to every single student. I do it when the issue comes up and the parent needs this kind of detailed information. So I would go into my grade book and I would click on the actual student, just like I wanted to see what was going on here. And I would click on grades. And then I can see it here so far. Brian hasn't submitted anything, you know, but technically nothing's due yet. But I could send this, whatever it says, maybe there's some grades in here, some zeros for things that are missing. And what I would do to send it to the parent without copying and pasting or typing it all out myself is you can just print it as a PDF. So you won't want to actually print it, obviously, to a printer, just to a PDF. And then you would save that to your computer and then you could email the parent and attach the PDF. And that will automatically put in like a whole grade printout. So that's one way of sending like a detailed grade report to parents. But again, that's kind of one by one. And so I do that more on a, like a communication basis when I'm really trying to help the parent and the student get things together. Otherwise you could just send the grade, you know, but that's not always super helpful. Once our parents sign on to Canvas, though, can't they just email it from the Canvas system to the parent? Uh, yes. So what? So I know the way that ours worked was we have we have our Canvas, and then we actually use Infinite Campus, um, or before we used Maestro. But the idea is that they would sync together. Then I would, from the SIS, like Maestro or Infinite Campus, I could email, because that housed all of my parent emails inside it, I could email all the parents, their students. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that was some good info on the, on the calendar and on the grade book. And then Santosh, I did, I see your question about quizzes. We'll go ahead and make a note and we also, yeah, we, I know there was also a question about there's the quizzes website and then there's quizzes inside Canvas. So two different things. So we'll hopefully address both of those.
Um, okay. All right. Um, Ellie, what do we have up next? Next we have um, rubrics. So I don't know, maybe do you want to do rubrics or should we jump into the quizzes and then rubrics? What do you guys want to do? Do you want to see, like, are you interested in knowing how to use rubrics inside Canvas? Or no? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. I can show a little bit there. Um, and then, yeah, that'll be, that'll be good. This is kind of a nice feature. So, because I think we have, we have, so we have the rubrics. And then we have the quizzes that we wanted to add in. Um, and then, then we'll have our like end up wrap up stuff. Okay. Well, I'm seeing a couple okay. votes for quizzes or a few votes. So why don't, should we do that? And then I'll just, we'll, we'll save a little bit of time to do rubrics. We don't have to spend a lot of time on rubrics. I can just show you how to kind of get in there and mess around a little bit. And then you'll see how to do it. Okay. Um, so I have not used quizzes inside Canvas. Um, okay, this is getting confusing. Like I said, there's quizzes, like the normal word, <laughs> right? And so I have definitely used these kinds of quizzes inside Canvas. You can create quizzes inside Canvas. Then the one that's coming in the chat box with like the double Z's and stuff like that, that is a website that is really awesome. So I think we'll start with the basic like Canvas quiz and then we'll see if we can maybe do a little bit of exploring and workshopping on the other one. So, oh, in Canvas. Okay, that's fine. Because <laughs> this came up in our last session too where we're like, I think it would be cool to use that quizzes, you know, inside Canvas. But yeah, let's just go ahead and we'll just try creating a quiz. So, um, Let's go into this one because this one's not quite so overwhelming on all the content. So again, I have too many things here that kids could view, but like, let's say I wanted to create a quiz. Personally, I really like to do it straight from modules because, um, because it just puts it in the place right where I want it. But I, but anyway. We won't get into that. Okay, so this is one we were working on earlier. Maybe I'll go into it. Well, no, we'll make a new one. All right, um, so maybe this is gonna be, um, maybe you have a geometry unit, you know, for like eighth grade. Um, so you'll go ahead and create a quiz inside here. I just was inside this quizzes tab and title it. You can put whatever instructions you want. And then here is where a lot of stuff starts to get kind of hairy is inside the questions. So um, you can have question groups. I don't usually do that. I usually just have questions. So I would just go to create a question or add a question. And then I'll number it like question one. And um, there are a lot of different question types in the sense of how students can answer. So multiple choice, that one's pretty self-explanatory, right? They can only pick one answer and you would have to give the different options that they could choose from. True or false, same kind of deal. Fill in the blank. Okay, so the way that fill in the blank works <coughs> is that um, you'll see it up here at the top a little bit of instructions. So you'll enter your question text and then you define all possible correct answers for the blank. So the tricky part with something like that, while we like fill in the blanks because we don't want kids to just be able to guess on a multiple choice necessarily every time, the tricky part with the computer that you probably have seen or run into is all of the possible answers the student could type in. So if they misspell it, you know, even some misspelling you totally wouldn't expect, or they capitalize something like, heaven forbid they missed that question just because like their cap locks was on or something like that, 
right? And so it can be tough to get every possible answer. Now, maybe if it's math, you know, numerical answer is a lot the same, but it only lets them type numbers. So, you know, it's not really possible to type a number wrong unless they, you know, actually like type it in wrong and then you could still talk about it with them afterward if they're like, oh, I meant, I meant to type this and you can really assess their understanding. So um, that would be the caution on things like fill in the blank or fill in multiple blanks. But fill in multiple blanks can be nice. So what that does is um, you can have them answer multiple parts of a question. So you can kind of like be giving them essentially partial credit. So now Santosh says a word bank can be provided for fill in the blanks. Oh, I did not know that. So um, does it let you like choose from the word bank? Or let the student choose from the word bank, I mean? Oh, okay. And does the student get to choose from those words that you type in? And then Ms. Martinez, I did see your hand, but I saw um, if you do fill in the blank, can you manually grade it? So I think the best way to do that, right, Ellie, would be actually to create an essay question, right? Correct. So a, a couple things with that. So if you're providing a word bank already, instead of doing fill in the blank, what you could do, um, Carrie, if you pull down those options, you could do um, where you have like a multiple choice and then they just pick the right one um, that they want to connect with that too. Because my, if, even if you give them the word bank, if like Carrie said, all of a sudden they like slip up and their cap locks is on or something like that, um, that there's still some chances that they could like look at it and like misspell it on there and then it would be wrong for them. Um, I mean, so like, obviously, you know your students the best. And so, but, but just a word of caution, because I've seen that happen a couple times where, where students had it like, and they knew, you definitely know that they knew what they were answering, but for some reason, like they missed a letter or a keystroke here um, or there. If you're looking for something that's going to be more of manually grading, essay is going to be your best. And when it says essay question, that's not, it's like short, it could be short answer. Um, it's just going to be something that's more, um, than a one or two worded response. Um, so anything that's going to be like, you want them to write a sentence, you want them to write five of their own opinionated um, ideas, and there's lots and lots of choices that they could have with that, you're gonna probably want that essay question. It doesn't mean that it has to be in paragraph form. It just needs to give them a, a text box when they go into that quiz, and then they can type as much as they want in that text box. Does that help? Perfect. And okay, and I think I understand. I'm sorry, I didn't understand about the word bank, but that is, an, you know, that's another nice option that you could just give them several words to choose from. Um, but the essay question is nice. It is manually graded. Like there's give and takes, right, with some of these because the computer will grade some. Now, let's say that you do choose to do a fill in the blank and they spell it wrong or in a way you can, you know, when you do a fill in the blank, you can create multiple answers. So if you're like, they might type it like this, they might type it like this. You can try to come up with as many as you can. And let's say they still technically get it right, but the computer marks it wrong. You can go into the individual student's assignment and give them the points on the question. I have done that before. Or even if there was a question that didn't have the right answer, you know, um, then I've just gone through and selected and I've given every kid the points for that question. So you can, you as the teacher still have control over that. It's just a matter of catching it. And it's kind of a bummer for a kid too, if they, if they, you know, take a quiz and then they're like, well, I answered it right. But, and then some kids are afraid to ask, you know, they're like, oh dang, I, I spelled it wrong. So I must've gotten it wrong. So um, anyway, so just some ideas on that. Um, 
It can be a little bit laborious, I know, creating like a quiz. I'm sorry, I just realized my, my camera is like halfway on my face. I was all looking at you guys. Okay, <laughs> so um, anyway, it, I just, I, you know, but, but it gets easier as you go. And then that's another thing that maybe you could split up as like a department or, you know, like share with another teacher um, if you have a quiz that's you feel really good about or maybe just it doesn't have to be super lengthy right a quiz could have like five questions on it, it doesn't have to be you know really long and each question that you create you can have one question that's fill in the blank you can have the next so question number two can be essay an essay question where it's more of a short answer then you can have a multiple choice question so you can mix up anything that you want in these quizzes Perfect. Okay. Other questions on quizzes that you've had? Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other tips. We also mentioned about the quizzes website. Have you guys ever used the quizzes website? Yes. I know. Always. <laughs> yes. What, what content do you teach? Math. Me too. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's like great for math, but there's a lot out here. Um, I'm going to go to quizzes.com and I'll go ahead and put that. I'm actually doing it right now. <laughs> oh, perfect. In the chat. Okay. So yeah, you're welcome to check it out. Um, you do have to create an account as a teacher. Your kids, if they take a quiz that you give them on quizzes, don't have to create an account. Um, are rubrics connected to the quizzes in Canvas? Ooh, good question. Um, I don't think you can have a rubric on a quiz, but you can have one for sure on an assignment. Um, so if you wanted an assignment, but, but when I say assignment, you can create an assignment, like let's say you want them to create a, PowerPoint or you want them to write an essay or something um, that can count as a quiz if you want it to go into a certain category. It's just in Canvas called an assignment so that you can put the rubric on it. Does that make sense? Okay, I do not know if these quizzes can be embedded in Canvas. Does anyone know? Have you tried they, it? There is not an integration in an app um with this so this would be something where you would um like as you're going through you would create a page with the link on it for them um have you guys noticed that uh, if you give that external link in canvas for quizzes uh the link expires in, within a few hours and my students say okay miss we cannot access that could you give us the do you guys have the same difficulty i don't know i was having this last week oh. multiple times does that maybe happen? I know that when you create a quiz on quizzes, I'm not sure if this is your question, but when you create a quiz on quizzes um, and you maybe make it like a homework mm -hmm. and then you can set when, how long it's available. I did set for a week, yes. And then it's still expired inside Canvas. Yep, inside Canvas it is expiring. I don't know why. And were you using it like did you use like external tool or did you just give them the link and the code? Mm, I think external link. I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't give it an external link. That could be a possibility. I'm not sure. It may be. Yeah. It may be that like you could um you could just give them like put an assignment and say go to this website. Here's the code for the quiz. Click submit and type complete when you're done or something, you know. Okay, Let, then, I'll, I'll um, try that. And that way you'll still, that would be a good way to give them like points on that assignment if you wanted to score, score their quiz and quizzes. So. And then Ellie just put some great, a great link about what we were just talking about that I wasn't sure how to do yet. So connecting rubrics to a quiz in Canvas. So, perfect. Okay. 
Um, how different is a quiz from assignments in Canvas language? Great question. So assignments, um, if you go to an assignment, and we add an assignment, um, it's a lot less like, um, like a quiz in the sense that you don't have specific questions that you type into and create with different answer options. Essentially, what you'll do is you'll you'll name your assignment, you know, like short story writing or whatever we were going to do earlier. And then um, you type your directions in here. And then um, they just have the opportunity to submit the assignment some way. So if I, we talked about this a little bit earlier, like online submission, you could select how you want them to submit it. So if you want them to just type straight back into you, into, into the assignment, that's a text entry. Um, a website URL could be like if you wanted them to share Google Slides with you or a Google Doc with you, um, something like that could be a website URL. Um, media recordings that would let them upload like videos and things like that. And then file uploads would be things like PDFs or Word documents or, um, and you can even choose what kind of file types you want to allow if you want, or just let them upload files. So you can choose how they submit their assignment, but it's a lot, I guess it's a lot freer in the sense of like, here's what I want you to do. And then they just submit something back to you. And then a quiz would be like, it has specific questions that they answer one by one. Um, and then they get scored on every single question. Yeah. And I would, I would add to that, that the quiz function is going to also allow you a little bit more um, analytics and some data in terms of how long students were actually on the quiz questions. So if you're concerned about like, you want them to only accomplish it at this time and have, and only spend this amount of time on that quiz, you would have a lot more control on that in a quiz versus an assignment. Um, so Carrie, I had a couple questions about like making quizzes into PDFs, which then students could snap that picture of and then mark it up. And I think in that regard, I would suggest probably just using it as an assignment rather than a quiz. What are your takes on that? Yes, so there's like that terminology in Canvas of kind of like, what do you want them to do? So you can still have it be a quiz in your class and you can even name the assignment like something quiz, whatever you want and then put it into your gradebook category that's going to attribute it points as a quiz, but you're gonna actually create it through the little assignments feature in Canvas because it's more like just a PDF that they're supposed to download and then submit to you. So what I'm understanding, and I'm a very, very <laughs> new to Canvas. So what I'm understanding in Canvas, quizzes are mostly graded by the system or whatever it is, can be. And assignments are graded by manually by the teacher. Yeah. One it, way to look at it. That's kind of the idea, I think, is to make it easier. But also, it will like split. If, if you create a quiz, the idea is that like, they'll have like question one, and they can like type their answer or select multiple choice and then question two. And so it's almost like you can kind of like assign partial credit that way while it's being graded. E even if some of the questions are graded by the computer, some could be graded by you mm -hmm. and submit it to you for grading. And you only have to check the ones that need to be graded by you. But it's kind of like more of that quiz experience of like, I'm going to go through and answer these five questions and then submit it. Thank Where you. Assignment is kind of like they're just going to upload a document to you, most likely, or something like that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Other things that have come across your mind. I think we've covered some good stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. This is going to sound so elementary. No, it won't. <laughs> no, it really will. Um, apparently, I've lost my sandbox. I can't find it. I had created two things that are not published. And I 
find them. They're just gone. Uh -oh. um, we that came up earlier too. Someone was like, "What happens if I delete a course?" So I do you want to take that? What's that? Oh, I was going to ask Ellie. Um, so usually, if you go to your dashboard, Carrie, can you run up to, can you uh -uh. Go to your dashboard? What's going to happen? Kim, is there one that we can? just try to delete. We won't actually go through the whole process. So chances are it's probably under your unpublished courses because your sandbox ones you're probably not going to publish because you're just playing around with those. Um, so it should be located under your unpublished. Um, but otherwise, if you go and you try to like delete a course. And I'm trying to think of where it's um. How did I do? I mean, like, it, you have to search a little bit to delete it because I deleted one of mine just to see the process. I think it's in settings, maybe. Because you have to, oh, right, yep, under settings and then go over to the right-hand side, delete the course. When you try to delete it, it's actually going to pop up with a, like, you have to, like, confirm that you actually want to delete it. And then when I wanted to delete my course, it came up with, oh, so now yours didn't come up with that. I had, like, a, if you really want to delete this, enter this code, like, and it gave me a code and then I had to re-enter it to, like, officially delete that course <laughs> but yours just deleted <laughs> so that's i don't know okay. why that's in a setting in mine and not in the setting on yours but i have a feeling veronica you would have noticed you were doing that right i definitely would have noticed that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it should be under your un unpublished courses if it because that one probably wouldn't have been your sandbox wouldn't have been one that you published can you go to courses and then all courses Let's okay. see if it's in there. Try that. Veronica, Veronica, what did you name it? It was named, um, one was named Sandbox and the other was named Training. And um, I don't know if they just disappeared. Maybe they disappeared in here somehow. I've also found that I, there it is. Why, why wasn't it showing it? It wasn't, they're both there. But also I found Sometimes that they don't show up on the dashboard, but I find usually if I go to all courses, then it'll have like, eventually you'll get a long list. That's, that's really weird. But how do you rename it if you've already named it? Is that, it looks like it's not possible. So I was also trying to do that. So I think that you need to go in. You may need to, first of all, favorite it so that it shows up on your dashboard if you want. We'll try that. Okay. And then, um, there's a nickname. Kids can nickname their courses too. You can also change these little backgrounds. Um, if you click into it, Carrie, and then when you click into it, is it in the settings? Up on the edit, right where on the top, go on the top. That edit, I think, is is where. Oh, that's home page. I did this. I wonder did this if it's in the so. settings course details. There we go. Okay. So inside the course under settings, you can rename your course here with the name, whatever you want. So awesome fifth grade. And then here is where you can also like choose an image for your course if you would like there to be one. And I believe that that image is what will show up on the tile that's on the dashboard for the student. So if you want them to have like a really cool picture of you. No, just kidding. My face <laughs> something, all related. <laughs> something related to your class. Yes, I'll I did that. Um, I also created, uh, I uploaded images, but it, it first brought an uh, overlay, color, color overlay. So you might wanna talk about how to remove that. <laughs> Yes, yes, good point. So I don't know if I have a good one in here. So let's say I'll just pick this one, fancy ASU. And then let's try updating that. And let's go to my dashboard. And yes, there's that color overlay, it like made it blue. So you can, uh, oh, I haven't done that before. Actually, if you go up on top, there's three dots on the right side. 
Okay. On the right side, do you see next to ASU, there are those three dots? Yeah. Click on those. No, not, not there. Up on top. A little bit higher on the right side. Yes, those three dots. Okay. Those. There we go. Yes. The and color overlay. You have to uncheck the color overlay. I learned something new. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. So if you want to add a like an image so that the kids know they're clicking on your class, it's really obvious. You can do that. So another, um, was it in here that someone shared the button factory? Not in this one, that was earlier. Okay, so, oh, there is, so yeah, there's a website called the button factory. So if you wanted to even like create a button or something, or, you know, you could look there for an image for your class or maybe even make one. I'll put um, it in the chat. Would, uh, sorry. Oh, and what were you gonna say, Andrew? Yeah, uh, one more thing. When you remove the color overlay, it only removes it for you. The kids will still see it with color overlay unless they remove it. Okay. Initially, they will see it with the color overlay. Perfect. Okay. Well, that is good to know because now we can tell our students if we want them to change it. Okay. Is there any way if you accidentally delete the course, can we get it back or it's gone? I think it's I think, gone. I think we can from the administrative but, side. <laughs> but yes. Canvas. Canvas can get it back. It's yeah, the, that's my thought. As I would, if that happened, I would reach out to Canvas rather than just being like, it's a loss. I would be like, you know, is there any way to retrieve that? Um, can, and maybe, can you show us where to find the Canvas help desk and then also the Canvas chat? Yeah, um, I don't, I don't Which know one? if I have the, Ellie, I'm, I'm not familiar with the chat. That's it right is, there, yep. There is this help desk. Um, another really, really great thing, I don't know, um, Ellie, if you're able to find it really quick. Um, okay is like the Canvas community. There are tons and tons of tutorials um, on the Canvas community about virtually every question that you might have. So um, some of the links that I put into the chat box were from the Canvas community, but I have it yes. right here. I'm just shared in the link. And honestly, I just do like probably what Ellie did where it's like, how do I, I'll just Google, how do I add a rubric to a quiz in Canvas? and something from the Canvas community will pop up. And um, that's my lifesaver. Okay, perfect. And then you wanted the chat feature too, right, Richard? Um, I think that Roosevelt employees have access to it. And it, it would be in the same place where you um, got the help in the question, okay. that icon. There should be a um, Canvas chat and usually it's a live operator at the other end. It may take like a minute or two for them to get back to you, but just ask them a question and then they'll start answering a question. They'll start chatting with you so that way they can pinpoint what your problem happens to be. Perfect. Okay. All right, well, um, we have a little bit of time left. So why don't we look a little bit at the rubrics and then um, we'll just kind of wrap things up, okay? And then if we have any questions at the end, we can, we can try to get those as we wrap up. So let's see. Oh, dang, I, don't, I lost my one that had the rubric in it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So let me see here. Um, I'll just kind of show how to create a rubric. You may have rubrics already created, right? So um, there's different options in Canvas for how to utilize those rubrics. Um, let's go into my assignments and I have this one maybe where I wanted them to do a little essay. And obviously I would have like directions in there for, for what they're going to do. Um, now here's the add a rubric. So this would be a way to like manually create a rubric in Canvas that you could use to grade the assignments, which is really nice for grading purposes. Um, it can be a little bit, like I said, like laborious um, on the creation end. 
So I would recommend this for something that you were going to use the rubric for multiple assignments, maybe like throughout the year or in multiple classes, because you can basically save that rubric to your account and then use it on different assignments and not have to create it more than once. So once it's created, it's done. But if it's like a very specialized rubric, if you don't have the time or brain power anymore to <laughs> go in and do a whole rubric in Canvas, it is totally possible just inside, um, inside the assignment when you type your directions, everything, you can literally just like copy and paste a table into here or an image of your rubric if you want them to just be able to see it so that they know how you're going to be grading it. Um, and you could just do that inside these directions, basically. That would be like a quick way to have a rubric, at least for your kids to view or even like download in here. You could have the PDF for them to download the rubric. But let's say the, um, that you have, you know, like a regular generic rubric that you're going to use. This rubrics feature in Canvas is really nice because like I said, you can use it for grading. So I clicked on add a rubric. Um, and you'll name it, maybe it's your essay rubric, something. Um, and then you can, you know, create your criteria. And then you have your ratings, which you can add multiple ratings. So, um, or maybe it's even like a discussion rubric or something and you want to grade it, grade it a certain way. Um, so I don't know, what would be a good criteria for this? Maybe voice. So I'm not an English teacher, but we'll pretend for a second. Okay, so you know, you can have your description and then for the ratings, you know, you can add as many as you want using this little add button. So the other interesting thing is that let's say, we'll say this one's just gonna be meets expectations. And maybe I wanna rename these, you know, to like exceeds expectations. I can edit those. I see there's maybe a question. I think it's a suggestion for a yes, for another criterion. Yes. Okay. So, and we can do that. We can add multiple criteria on here. You know, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one out. So let's say um, needs improvement. And obviously um, inside those, like right now, I just have that really simple way of saying it, but I could like go through and talk about just like on a rubric how how they earn the, that many points. Um, this is five, three, and zero. You could have five, four, three, two, one, and zero. You could add as many as you want, or you can make it be a range of scores so that you as the teacher can say like, okay, this one is, it's a little confusing, I think the way it's written here, but it says five to greater than three. So basically five or four points, you would get to pick this when you're grading if they had three, two, or one, or zero, and you can change those ranges, like in here, let's say I wanted it to only go to one, and then this could be like one to zero, basically, or basically uh, one point. Um, and then standard-based grading can be one to four scores. Yes, so you would probably just have an extra one of these in here. I maybe would unselect the range. So maybe we'll make this one needs improvement. Um, I don't know. And I, I don't have the best language for rubrics on the brain, but that's okay. So <laughs> something like that. Um, and then I would maybe make this one be the four. Does that answer your question about that standards based? Um, Yes, and well, one more thing, if 
when it like when I grade it in and I say, okay, the student got a three in this criteria, a two in this criteria. When I when the points are added, is it shown as a percentage or is it shown like the average of those one, two, three, four? So they would get points for each criterion. Um, so let's see. Do the capitalization. And so, you know, you can go in and edit each of these. I would like, I like the duplicate feature just so that it can kind of like keep things going but then you can go in and edit each one and then now these you can change so like let's say i want voice to be weighted more so maybe i'm going to make that one be eight points the total points on the rubric is 12 now does that help answer your question or only part way part way i think there will be like maybe some instructions from the district when it comes to grading uh -huh. later on and essentially what it's going to do is, um, so you'll go and you'll click, um, use this, I, I would do this, I would reuse the rubric for assignment grading. And then when the student does the assignment and they submit it, you as the teacher will basically see this rubric and can pick each spot that they've scored. And then it will total it up for you and give them that many points. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so let's say you already have a rubric created, like I said, you know, in some PDF, you can do a lot of just copying and pasting over into this. It's just kind of setting up that format the first time. And then um, when you're done, you can create the rubric. Oh, and I had, um, oops in my assignment. Yeah, I had this as a zero up at the top for points. So it was just asking me making sure that I wanted to, you know, have it be a certain number of points in the end. So, all right, so there's my rubric. It shows up there for the student when they see the assignment, when they pull it up, it will show up for you when you're grading. And um, the nice thing is that it's, it's in your account basically now. So like if I wanted to add it to a different assignment and I've already made it. Um, so essay number two. I lose it. I don't know what's happening. Here we go. Okay, so down here, um, after I've created my assignment, I can add my rubric and I can actually now go to find a rubric. And I've already created this one. So it gives, it'll give you whatever ones you have created. I can select that one and it plops it into that assignment now and I can reuse it. Okay. All right. How are we feeling? I think this has been really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions that we didn't get to or that um, we want to make sure we answer before we're done today? Um, I know Dr. Ramos said that um, he's going to talk about submitting the assignments, the especially the ones that are going to be PDF, 
but if you have time, can you talk about it? Um, so I'm not sure how to demo that because um, the idea is that the student would download it as a PDF and then yeah. have to take a screenshot of it and then annotate it on their iPad, but I don't really have a way of demoing that part where they would like annotate it. So, okay. What might help um, is to, once you, once you guys have like gone over that or, and we can talk, we can take a little bit of time to talk about more here is creating some kind of video to explain to students like what you want them to do and then posting that somewhere in the course, either on your homepage or within the assignment itself to explain like, here's how you would submit an assignment like this by drawing on it, like annotating on it on your iPad. I think there are, if you do some searching it, like do a Google search about videos on how to, you know, annotate a PDF on an iPad, there's probably a video out there that you could possibly use too. I also, I also talked to Apple Melissa during this conference um, and let her know that we needed to differentiate um, during some portions of our meetings. And so she's more happy to work with anybody who needs support that. So that way you can support your campus once you go back. So just so that way everybody on the call knows what we're talking about. But the technology learning leaders, there's one from every campus. We train them and the expectation is that they go back and train their campus on like the, you know, different uh, features and components and um, programs that we're learning about in, in Roosevelt. Yeah. So, Perfect. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I do, I do really think that'll help a lot of teachers because that's, that came up multiple times. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop sharing here and we'll just kind of wrap it up. And if we have a few minutes left at the end, then we're free to go or you're welcome to stick around if you had any lingering questions. Um, so um, this is a resource that's free. We love free things. So um, Ellie, if you could put that link also in the chat box with the Google site. So this was created by um, our school to just help teachers with lots of resources. So if you go in and explore, use that link um, inside the chat box and you can go in and explore whatever you want, obviously, but there's things on Canvas, Zoom, Lots of different platforms. There's things on Flipgrid. Um, just a reminder that also at the beginning, I'll go ahead and try to grab it. We shared um, this, whoops, training website that we will in September cover like even more topics. So if you are interested in signing up for more trainings, um, like on things like Flipgrid or just wanting to learn more about online teaching um, that is also free and available to you. So those are a couple of resources that are hopefully helpful. And we do have a Facebook community um, and you're welcome to join that. That will have information on those trainings that I mentioned and it's also just a place to have somewhere to reach out to other teachers that are teaching online. And so Ellie will put that in the chat box. And obviously that's optional if you want to join that or not. And then we have our exit survey from today. So please be sure to fill this one, this last link out for us. We love the feedback. So share, um, you know, how today went. And we're really glad that we got to be with you this afternoon. I know it was probably kind of a long day to sit and talk about everything we're doing during the week, but be sure that you get to go and take that nice break this afternoon and relax a little bit. And thank you again for all you do for all of your students and um, everything that you, that you are as a teacher. And then lastly, Ellie put in the chat box one more time that link to the presentation. On the very last slide of our presentation, will be the link to the recording. So if you see here, there's a spot that says morning session recording. That one will actually be really different even though it was the same training because they had other questions. 
Um, but then our afternoon session was awesome. And we'll go ahead and put that link in there once we have that. So when you come back to this presentation in the next couple days, if you wanted to view the recording and go back and see how did she do that or what, did, what were the steps to that, it will be in the recording. But thank you guys for being an awesome group. It was fun to be together and talk about Canvas. So um, again, Ellie's and my contact information is on the first couple slides of that presentation. So if you need to reach out to us for any reason or have questions, don't hesitate to do that. Did you just say um, we'll get the training in our email? We have the Zoom. I am not totally sure if an email will come out afterward, but I do think that the recordings will be uploaded to the video library for your school. Yeah, there's an RSD YouTube channel. And so um, I'll take this and upload it by the end of the weekend. And it will also, if you use that link to the presentation, um, I just put it in the chat box. It'll be on the last slide. There'll be a link that opens up the recording for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. Yay. <laughs> I know. It's nice to be able to go back and view it at our own pace. That's like one of the nice things about online learning, right? So... <laughs> Okay, well, I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your Saturday, and um, thank you again for coming. Feel free to stick around for the next few minutes. Um, Ellie and I will, well, um, I know at least I'll stay in the room and um, help answer any questions that you might have thought of last minute. I, I have a quick question for Dr. Ramos, because uh, I believe he would be in charge of this, but um, I was logged out, uh, like uh, in the middle of this, this last part of the, the session, I was logged out of Canvas and now I can't log back in. Sure. It says I have the wrong username password, but I'm pretty sure it's correct. And I did the like forgot, you know, password thing, but Canvas says that it's like up to the school administration, like they can't do anything about it. So I have to contact you. So did you go through um, Clever to get in? No, honestly, as a special area teacher, I've never used Clever. <laughs> so. That may be the only reason because we switched over to Clever. And so um, uh, everything is housed inside of there. I can give you a tip on how to get into Clever. So if you want to go ahead and uh, touch base um, offline, we can do that. I'm going to put my phone number in, okay? Okay, thank you. Is it okay if I call you after the session or do oh, I need yeah. to wait until Monday? <laughs> Most definitely. After the session is fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your help today. I really appreciate it. This was really helpful for the team. One of the things that I have found is that if you go in and investigate and explore, there's so much you can learn and there's not a whole lot that you can like really um, uh, damage or make mistake or, you know what I mean? Like, we encourage you to go in and play with Canvas because that's how you're going to learn. And you're going to find all kinds of like unique icons and buttons and uh, ways to upload material. So this is a huge um, endeavor for us, we, we realize, but it's also going to help our kids as we prepare them from elementary to high school because Phoenix Union is going to adopt this. And then also we know that our community colleges as well as our universities in state also adopted Canvas. So we're looking at that pipeline um, for a child's educational career. Awesome, I love that. And it, yeah, it is a great college readiness tool because so many colleges are using Canvas or even just some kind of online platform. And so it's really nice to think about it that way that we're really preparing students and getting them ready for that next step. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and it was really fun being with you guys this afternoon. So thank you, Ellie and Carolee. I think it was a very, very informative session. I appreciate your patience with all the questions and your openness to uh, and flexibility. 
I know. And if we don't know the answer, you see what we do. We just like, let's try it. Right. So that's like, that's all we do. And canvas it's all these things are constantly changing too. Like you see, I go into canvas and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's different than the last time I was there. So um, it really doesn't change from day to day like that, but I didn't get to teach over the summer. So it had been a little bit since I had done some of those things. So thanks for your patience with me too. I get to learn lots of things as we get to go through it. So it was fun. All right, and thank you, Ellie, for all you've done today. You've shared lots of expertise. So um, I think we'll let, we'll let everyone run. Go have your relaxing break and have a great Sunday, okay? Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.